guys, I have a super important question that is not gonna sound super important and honestly, it's gonna sound really stupid. But when is the last time you ate off the floor? I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear a dang person say never. Because if you say never, I know you're lying. Everybody's eating off the floor before. Now realize I said before, and when's the last time? Because if you're saying you still do it, there's a problem. But when is the last time you ate off the floor, bro? Um, really random question. I, I just had, I had a gummy drop it. It was a, a vitamin gummy, and it dropped on the floor, bro. And I'm like, dang. Said so these vitamins, you know what I'm saying? That's money. You know what I'm saying? Me and the family, we take vitamins. So you know what I'm saying? If I drop a vitamin, that's a vitamin for somebody else going if I get another one. So I'm like, dang, I could get another one. I could pick it up, wipe it off, eat it. And you know, I I, I had stopped doing it because you know, when you're younger, you used to do that junk all the time because you know it, it was nothing to you. But me, knowing where germs are and just how easy it is to pick up germs, I'm kind of looking at it a little suspicious. Now I'm not really, I'm like, oh, it's a little weird. But I had to think about my family. You know what I'm saying? I said, I gotta do this for him. So I pick it up, put a little bit of water on it. I ain't gonna lie, I, I, I was a little scared. Wipe it off. I said, I gotta do this. So I said, I ate it. But after I did it, I said, yeah, that's never happening again. It ain't taste no different, but I have a weird feeling there's a couple of specimens on that thing and I ain't trying to find out, I'll tell you that. But I, I had me wondering, when was the last time you ate off the floor? Cause I, other than that, I can't think of the last time I did it cause I mean, just, I don't trust like I don't trust floors outside my home, bro, for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I would never eat off the floor anywhere but my house, and I wouldn't even do that in my crib for real. So I don't know. Hey, pops. My dad just drove by the opposite direction. He has no idea right now. I'm currently speaking about eating off his floors. It's crazy. <laughs> it's officially been two days since my lift would be grizz, and if you saw any of the videos I've done with him, goodness, dude. I mean, he put me through it. I am so sore. Worst thing I've experienced in my life. On the real though, I'm sure I brought it up before, but uh, y'all gotta let me know. So when it comes to like animals, snakes and bugs and stuff like that, I'm not really scared of animals. You know what I'm saying? Like I love snakes and crap like that, but I do kind of have like a little trouble with like bugs. And I don't know why that is. Cause you would think that bugs are, are less scary than snakes. But for me, it's kind of the opposite way around. Like I hate spiders. I hate, oh, I hate beetles. Anything beetle-like, any roaches and crap like that, I can't stand. But I love a snake, you know what I'm saying? It's weird. Um, I don't know why that is, though. But one thing about, like, having pet snakes and lizards and stuff, you, you have to, like, feed them, um, like, bugs and stuff like that. So I would have to kind of overcome that fear. I'm getting better at it, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing I've realized, bro, like, and, and I'm telling you, in trusting God, bro, my confidence is going so up in things that I usually I'd be so scared of. Just because I realized that, you know, no matter what, I'm protected. You know what I'm saying? Physically, mentally, spiritually, especially. Um, I think uh, one thing about men, one of our greatest traits uh, we got to understand is that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we are the protector. We're, you know what I'm saying? We really should never fear anything in life. You know, men, women, no matter what, like, we got God. You know what I'm saying? Um, doesn't mean be stupid, but at the same time, like, don't be scared. You know what I'm saying? There's a much larger chance for things going right than things going wrong. I think we sometimes we just focus on the, the what if too much but 100 you know what i'm saying it only takes one time to mess up mess around and lose your life so do take it serious but you know what i'm saying like bugs can't stand them snakes love them i gotta figure out like how to fix that though um because i think i should be a lot less scared of bugs than i am compared to snakes but you know when it comes to bees i'm not scared of bees at all um because i realize how necessity how much of a necessity are they are and i don't i think they i realize how like chill they are but wasps Dude, that's a different creature, bro. Wasp and hornets and crap like that. I can't stand it. I, can't, I just can't do those. Ugh, dang, y'all just finished editing last vlog. That joint came out to 21 minutes, 21 seconds, and 21 milliseconds. I kind of want to, like, move it one thing over so, it, like, is it perfect anymore? That'd be kind of, ugh, it's a little scandalous. Man, let's go ahead and get rolling, man. Let's go ahead and get rolling. Follow me and Jeremiah. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm still out there with Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah did write this, but go with me to Lamentations, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 12 to 13. It reads, The kings of the earth and all the world's inhabitants did not believe that an enemy or adversary could enter Jerusalem's gates. Yet it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priest who shed the blood of the righteous within her. Again, I want you to realize the kings of the earth 
and the world's inhabitants did not believe the enemy or adversary could enter Jerusalem's gates. But it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests who shed the blood of the righteous within her. You aren't weak when you stand with God. <laughs> you, you, you can't be broken down and tore up when you stand with God. You are not susceptible, nor are you vulnerable when you stand with God. But one thing that is clear is when you stand alone, you are truly weak. You are susceptible and the enemy has a way to enter. See, one thing about the Lord is that he is a key. He opens doors and he closes doors. And one thing is that he opens doors for his people. One thing that people who ain't supposed to be around you, things that aren't supposed to be in your life, he will close the door on. But you know, one thing about man is that we have a big issue with following the rules. And so many times we leave ourselves in situations where we end up doing things alone. And, and when we move along, we move without the key. And the problem is we leave that door wide open because we don't have the tools to shut it. And so what I want you to understand is that your sin is the reason that you that, that life is beating you and breaking you down. Yes, the enemy can come at you. Things are going to happen. You may lose somebody. You may lose some things. You know what I'm saying? Temptation is going to be at the door. Life can be throwing things at you. Your finances might be going crazy, but the Bible makes it clear. That is not the end all be all. Life does not end nor start with the enemy. The enemy has no say so in what God has called into your life. So when things don't look to be blessed, it does not mean that they are. It does not mean that they aren't just because they don't look to be blessed. Be the situation, the way things look is not the dictation of what's really going on. But the problem is we have a bunch of Christians living lives where their situations truly are the situations of the life. Because again, the plans God has for them, they're not living in alignment too. Because again, the things God has on our lives are 100% conditional, but it's not conditional based off of, based off of the enemy. Again, the, the, the kings did not believe that the kings and the inhabitants of, of these other nations did not believe that Jer Jerusalem could even be penetrated by the enemy. But again, it was not because of who Jerusalem was, but because who stood before Jerusalem. So understand, the enemy can't put a hand on your life. Your situation can't do a thing to you. But when you step away from the shield that is before you, you leave yourself vulnerable. And all of a sudden, yes, life begins to cave in. The, 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 there is a conditional will and an unconditional will when it comes to God. And one thing that we know for sure is that our salvation, once we accept it, it is ours. It cannot be taken. But when we live our lives, there is something called mercy and favor. That comes with faithfulness and loyalty to our God. And, and when we walk in this, we are blessed with favor and mercy that, that, that cannot be, be strict when we're walking in accordance. But that is conditional. That is 100% just conditional. Now, your salvation is unconditional. That love that God gave us, that gift, after you accept it from going forward, that salvation is now unconditional. There's nothing you can do to lose that gift. But seeing that gift in the fulfillment of favor in our lives on earth is something that we can 100% lose depending on our uh, on the way that we're living. That is the condition. Is our life in alignment with God? Yes or no? And you might be like, Alex, how does that work? If, if God loves me, if, 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 if I love God, then, then, then his favor is always going to follow me wherever I go. And that is 100% right. But understand, in order to gain favor, you must be standing before his face. It, it, there's a reason why the Bible, these men and women of God always ask God to, to show his, to, to, to have his face, or, uh, show his face upon them or have his face facing them or, or to look upon them. And one thing that we have the understanding that God does not look at sin. I think we see multiple times in the Bible where, 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 where sin actually leads God to look away because God and sin do not mix. So do you think that favor dwells in a midst of sin? Mercy does not come into play until repentance comes into play. So I'm not saying you go sin and you come right back and say, I'm sorry. And all of a sudden things are okay. And boom, mercy's back. No, 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 no. Repentance is a lifestyle. <laughs> it means you turn away from that sin and you stay turned. You don't turn back. 
And the biggest thing is that the main reason God's face is not shining upon us is because to sin, you have to turn your back on God. See, the reason favor was on you was number one, God never looks away in the first place. It's, it always starts with us turning the opposite direction because sin is in the complete opposition of where God is. So that's why I say don't focus on, on what sin you're not trying to commit, but focus on God and, and committing yourself to his ways. Because if you're committed to God's way, then you're going the complete opposite way of sin. But the problem is many of us don't don't see this. We're too, we're too busy trying to fight sin, quote unquote, fight the temptation. It's to just trusting God and following in his steps. Because when we follow God's steps, then temptation can't grab you. Because you're not going to step off the path if you were aligned with God. And so I want you to understand, sin hurts. Sin leaves you broken. Sin leaves you susceptible. And so my entire point, man, I know I made it a little longer than I meant to. My entire point is just to stress how bad pain hurts. Or how bad sin hurts forgive me for that and i keep stressing this just because i mean sin makes things it's just so far from what god intends for us in jeremiah 29 chapter 11 verse people love to quote this and when i was younger i used to hear it all the time but god makes it clear he wants to prosper you he has a future and a hope for you but the problem is that our sin keeps us from those promises the conditions is nothing but loyalty and faithfulness to God. The same what man, people give into temptation and pe pe people will be like, and the devil told me to as, as if it, it has control over you. But we just read that people, people they didn't think that the enemy could do anything to Jerusalem. And it was all because of their sin that the enemy had the opportunity to do anything. So again, the enemy, it's whispers can't do nothing. If, if if your best friend came up to you and, and whispered in your ear, go cheat on your girlfriend, come go cheat on your wife, are you going to do it? No, not unless you want to, not unless you don't truly love them. Because when you really love somebody, you're faithful, you're faithful to them and your desires are to do right by them and you don't desire to do wrong by them. And even when a desire, sneak, when a thought sneaks into your head, you choose to be faithful over dishonorable, even if your desire is in the opposite way, because our flesh wants what the flesh wants, man. It's quite clear that lust is a real thing. You're going to have moments where you may be tempted to lust after another another person. But because you're loyal to your person, because you love them and care for them and they love and care for you, you're going to choose, if you really love them, to do right by them and be loyal. So how can you be more faithful and, to, and loyal to a human being than the one that created not only them, but you yourself? The one who gave you the opportunity, the one that gave you a life and, 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 and the ability to enjoy the things you enjoy. How could you be more faithful to a creation than the creator? And so my point to you is understanding that our sin keeps us from God's promises. Our sin hurts us more than it helps. It gives satisfaction in the moment, but long term deprivation. From the things God has already proclaimed for us to have. God says we have a future and a hope. But in order to claim this, you must be willing to stand by. Again, God's talking about his people when he says these things. God's people are to be a loyal people. So if you want to gain this, be a loyal follower. Because he's loyal to you. But in order to gain these gifts, you have to receive it. And receiving it begins with the acknowledgement of what God has called for you to do. Receiving it, you have to, you have to come in agreement with the standards God has put in place. Come, come in agreement with the conditions God has called for you to live by in order to do it. And it's not about rules. It's about love and loyalty. That's all it's about. The same way you can be loyal to your wife, to your husband. Be loyal to God because he deserves more loyalty than anybody else. Because he loved without condition. Many of us love with a conditional love, but God loved without receiving a thing. And all he asks is that you would have a relationship with him the way he wants one with you. But we deny him consistently. And wonder why we're not receiving gifts that we've not accepted. And so I'm not trying to get on you. I'm just trying to plead with you to realize 
the bad that comes with your sin and love God more than your sin. That's all I'm asking. Because I want you to realize your sin hurts you more than you think. Let us pray. Dear God, nobody's perfect. I know I'm not. And because of that, Lord God, we must stand behind your shield. We must trust in you, Lord God, to help us to overcome the very things, Lord God, that have held us to the stuck. I remember God coming to you, Lord God, when I didn't know how to overcome lust, Lord God, and getting by the side of my bed and just praying and crying out and giving it to you, God. And until I did that, God, I couldn't overcome it. But I had to learn and realize that it was not my battle to fight. It was not my strength that could pull me through, but yours. And so today, Lord God, I come before you and I, I bring my case before you, my burdens. I bring the burdens of those watching, Lord God, whatever they have, Lord God, I pray they'll place it before you. And we give it up, God, today. We give it up, Lord God, and we say thank you for the overcoming, Lord God. The overcoming of lust, the overcoming of adultery, the overcoming, Lord God, of homosexuality, the overcoming, Lord God, of, 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 of anger of fear, the overcoming, Lord God, of disobedience, the overcoming, Lord God, of, of ignorance and, and lack of a desire for the knowledge and, and, and care of, 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 you, of understanding and knowing you. We come, Lord God, asking, Lord God, for a deeper relationship. One, Lord God, that calls us away from our sin and closer to you. So we say thank you today, Father. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Because in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Oh, y'all. Hey, y'all enjoy that vibe, man. I pray you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I pray you enjoy the vibe, man. Hey. No limit. Ah. Y'all get winning. We'll say that.